Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, find the longest valid obstacle course at each position. I don't know what kind of cruel person at Leak Code would give us this problem on just day six of the month, but oh well, let's get into it anyway. I'm a little bit sleep deprived, so I hope I don't make too many mistakes. Basically, we're given a bunch of obstacles and I'm really gonna try to get rid of the story of this game. Forget the idea that we're given obstacles. I care about the numbers that we're given. We're given an array of numbers, as you can see down here. Maybe something like this. What we want to do is actually convert this into another output array where each element, well, each index, right? Like for example, this index over here is gonna to correspond to this value. We want to put a value in each position based on these rules essentially. So for this position, we're gonna put a value here such that we can choose any values from here and any value to the left of it. So basically this prefix, and for uh, this value, we would want this prefix. And for this value, we'd want this prefix but not necessarily the entire prefix. There are some more rules going on. For example, for three, we must include this value three when we are talking about this position. So we included three, great. What about the two values before? We have choices. Do we want to include these guys or not? Let's take a look at the rules over here. It seems like we care about the relative order of these elements. So one comes first, then two, then three. If we decided to skip two, we would still care about the relative order. One comes first, then three. This is the idea of a subsequence, which this problem doesn't really go super in depth into, but if you know what a subsequence is, this problem is a lot easier. And in fact, I'll tell you that there is another leak code problem called the longest increasing subsequence problem, which I've solved before. And I highly recommend checking that problem out because this is just a harder version of that problem. It's actually pretty much the exact same problem. Just leak code is a little bit more strict with the runtime requirements. But going back to our array over here, what exactly are we trying to do with the values that we can choose from? We're trying to maximize the length of the values we can choose basically to create a subsequence that is as long as possible. But take a look at the last rule over here. We can only include these elements if in the order that they appear, for example, one comes first, then two, then three, if they are in non-decreasing order, they don't spell that out for you, but here you can say every obstacle except the first is taller than or the same height as the obstacle immediately before it. So basically non-decreasing order, you just have to kind of interpret that. That's what makes this kind of a hard problem, I think. And usually medium problems, they don't give you this much of a story for a problem that's already pretty difficult. And if I'm being completely honest with my explanation here, at this point, I immediately knew how to solve the problem. I immediately knew this was a dynamic programming problem. I'll try to explain the intuition of why, but in my case, the reason I knew that well, I guess let me show you why I knew that. Last night, I was working on this quiz feature where you can quickly review leak code problems. I was doing that for this problem, House Robber, which is a famous dynamic programming problem, and I condensed it into a bunch of quizzes. And this is a very similar dynamic programming problem where the subproblem is sort of a prefix of the array, and you can solve it by iterating through it and keeping track of completed subproblems. That's how I knew that this problem could also be solved in that way, also because I've solved the longest increasing subsequence problem before, but basically you can see that this is just a big game of sub problems. To get the value in this position, we need to solve this sub problem. To get the value in this position, we need to solve this sub problem, et cetera, et cetera. And the sub problems build on top of each other. If we want to solve this entire problem, we have to solve the three sub problems first. And honestly, that quiz feature I was working on is the reason I'm sleep deprived in the first place. So let's try not to mess up too much in this problem. So while I'm pretty much skipping to the array solution for this problem, I wanna mention that it can be solved with recursion. In terms of brute forcing it, you can think of it as a decision for each value. We can choose to include one or skip one altogether. We can then choose to include two or skip two 
all together. And we would, of course, want to have only subsequences which are in increasing order or non-decreasing order at the very least. So now maybe uh, let's say we skip three and then we get to this one over here. Can we get the one after we have already taken a two? Probably not. This is not a valid subsequence, so we can't really use that. That's the recursive idea. If you want to learn a lot more about that, I highly recommend checking out my LIS video. I believe that is problem leak code 300. I have a pretty good video on that. But now I'm just going to jump into the dynamic programming solution. It's honestly not easy either, though. So let's start at the beginning. We're going to be iterating through this. Of course, we'd want to start at the beginning. We want to solve this subproblem first. And since we just have a single value, let's keep it simple for now. The length of the longest subsequence from here is going to be one. Let's add that to our result here. Now, moving on to the next value over here, we want to do the same thing, ideally without having to repeat all of the previous work. In this case, there was just a single sub problem that we solved. So it's not a lot of work to have to repeat. But as our array gets bigger and bigger, you can tell that we probably don't want to have to repeat every single piece of work. That's kind of why we're storing some of it in this array. But we're actually going to need a second array that I'm going to talk about in just a second. Because remember this array here, what we're storing in this array is the heights. I'm going to add that right here the heights or the lengths, I guess you could say. So longest from here is going to be one. Now for this one, I'm going to keep it simple and just say for this, this is also two. I'm not going to show you how we're going to do this algorithmically just yet. For now, let's keep it simple though and just put a two here. Again, just by looking at this, we can tell this is valid. The length of this is three and it's an increasing order. Now, finally, we get to one. This is not valid. But how would we know that algorithmically? And also, how would we know that efficiently? Well, to fill in this spot, one thing we could do is look previously and say, OK, the LIS of this was three. So let's try to be greedy here. Can I just say the LIS for this spot is going to be three plus one. Can I just say it's going to be four again? Well, for that to be the case, we know that for an LIS, by definition, the largest value is going to be usually at the end of it, right? Like the two is going to be the largest value. If there were a larger value to the left of it, then it definitely would not be an LIS. That's one assumption we can make. So all we have to do here looking at this one to check if we can put a three plus one over here is just check was the value at this index less than or equal to the one in this case it was not so clearly this is not going to create an LIS for us. So one thing we can do this is sort of brute force this and then look at the previous one and ask the same question. Is this value less than or equal to one? No. So we can't put two plus one over here. We'll do the same thing over here with one. Yes, this one over here is less than or equal to this one. So a possible valid LIS ending at this position would look like this, these two values, and we skip these two, and the length of that would be a big two over here. I was going to say that's the same as the example over here, but they actually used a slightly different input. So I guess we didn't make a mistake after all. As you can kind of tell, this time complexity, like for each value, we're potentially going to have to look at every previous value and the length of it as well to get the uh, result for each position. So that's going to be big O of n squared. And this is actually not going to pass on leak code. If this was a medium problem, it probably would, but it's a hard one, so it won't. And we can actually make it slightly more efficient by instead of looking at this linearly using binary search because we can create a second array. I guess I should probably describe because that's kind of the hard part of this problem. The problem with this array over here is it's just telling us the length of the subsequence that ends at a particular index. Like for example here, yes, the LIS ending here is gonna be three, but what's the last value of it? And how can we organize it in another array such that we can run binary search on it? Well, initially we're gonna take this array, it's gonna be the same size as this array, except a plus one. We're actually going to have a plus one because the index of this array is going to correspond to the length of a subsequence. So if the length of this subsequence is going to be four, like that's the max size of this subsequence, then in the worst case, we might try to access index four of this second array, which we know will be out of bounds because over here would be three. That's why we add this extra element. 
four over here. So that's why it's one size larger and the index is gonna to correspond to the length of a subsequence and we're gonna take the length and map it to the last value. So for here, the length of this subsequence was of length two. What's the last value of it? It's also two. The LIS over here was of length three. Its last value was also three. We want to create this type of mapping, but there might be cases where maybe over here, like we saw, right? We saw that we created another subsequence over here, which was also of length two. It looked like this one. Can you tell me if we had future subsequences that could choose to either concatenate to this subsequence that we're looking at that corresponds to this index or this subsequence that corresponds to this index. Can you tell me which one you would rather choose? I don't know about you, but I would rather choose this one because it has a smaller ending value, which is a one. It gives us more flexibility. This subsequence has an ending value of two. It gives us less flexibility. So if we encounter future ones, we can't add this one to this subsequence, but we can add that one to this subsequence. I hope that makes sense. And I'm honestly in a bit of a rush, so I hope that that kind of does suffice most of the ideas. Unfortunately, I do have to jump into the coding explanation now, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now getting into the code, one thing I did was change the parameter name. It was originally obstacles, but I changed it to nums just because it's a bit shorter. First, we're gonna create the result array. It's going to be initially empty, and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna use it with a comment over here. The result at index i is equal to the height of the LIS ending at I and including nums of I. Just like I kind of showed in the drawing explanation, this is the first array. And I know we're using the term LIS, that's technically not correct because we're actually talking about non-decreasing subsequences, not increasing ones, but I think that's a pretty small point and it allows us to use this acronym, so I'd rather not say out the entire term. And we know we're going to go through every num in the input array and then eventually return the result. But we also know we have a second array, dp, which the length of it has to be the length of nums plus one. And how we're going to be using this is the value at index i, dp at i, where i is equal to the length of the LIS is the smallest ending value. I know I didn't talk about that in the drawing explanation and I really apologize for that, but it kind of goes back to the point that I was talking about. If you had a choice of two subsequences of the same length, you would rather choose the one with the smaller ending value. It gives you more flexibility. That's why we're doing it this way. That's why I'm going to initialize this to a really big value. Every value in this array is initially going to be not infinity because we don't need to make it that large. I'm just going to say 10 to the power of Eight, because that will be larger than any integer in the input array based on the requirements of this problem. So that's how we're going to be doing this. Then as we go through every single integer n, this is kind of the confusing part and I wish I had more time to talk about it, but on our DP array, we want to run binary search searching for the n value. Well, in actuality, this bisect will do something similar to that. It will search this array for the first position that this n value can be inserted in. Of course, since all the values here are larger than n, the first time we execute this for loop, this is going to evaluate to be, I believe, zero, right? Because it's going to be inserted at the beginning of the array. It's smaller than every value in the array, so it should be at index zero. And that makes sense because the LIS of the first element in the array should probably be of length one. So when we return this, that's the return value. Because remember, the index here corresponds to the length of the LIS. So we can then just go ahead and say result dot append the index. But don't forget to actually say plus one because this will initially return zero, but the length of the LIS of just a single element is not zero, it's one. So that's why we add the plus one. And since the first index is where this value belongs, then we can also actually insert it into the DP then. At index, we're going to now place this N value. This is the smallest ending value for LISs of this length. But that's pretty much it. I apologize if this was below my usual standard. I think one thing we're forgetting here is that bisect is actually belonging to an object. So I'll say bisect dot bisect. This is basically running binary search on DP 
looking for n, the first place we could insert it. Of course, we could also write out our own binary search, but I'm kind of running out of time. So I'm going to go ahead and run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks. And I'll see you pretty soon.